Why is Ponamu so tough? That's a question for the kaitiaki of this town, Ngaitahu, who will be working alongside a team from GNS Science, Te Puwao, as well as artisans and scientists from Otago University, to discover the special properties of Aotearoa's nephrite jade as part of a new Marsden-funded research project. The project is the next step for the legacy of the Beck International Jade Research Collection, which was vested with GNS Science by Russell Beck and Te Runanga o Ngaitahu in 2017. GNS structural geologist Dr Simon Cox is co-lead of the material science aspects of the collaboration and he joins us now. Dr Simon Cox, Ngā mihi nui kia quent. welcome to the programme. First of all, can you give us your theories as to why Ponamu is as tough as steel and resistant to fracture compared to other rocks given the, the minerals in the rock are all fairly soft? Tēnā koe, Piripi. Uh, yes, they are quite soft, um, and it's really quite a paradox. Um, the theory in the past has been that the uh, fibres of the minerals are all locked together and twisted together to make that strength the way that perhaps flax is used in Harakeki rope. Uh, but when we look in detail, we don't see that evidence. Uh, we think that it's much more uh, related to the strain that's stored in the rocks and the way that those crystals are locked together. So when the rock is formed deep in the earth, it's a bit like a jack-in-a-box. It's been pushed together in the box, and when it comes out, it's still got that spring compressed and that strength compressed in it. And that has an effect on that way that it, it resists the the the, ero the, um, the erosion and the breaking of it. So we think that certainly stress is one role, and then maybe also just the way that the crystals are arranged so that they resist fracture. Uh, but it's certainly uh, something that we're very interested in. And, and if you ask me again in three years, I'll probably <laughs> tell you something completely different. <laughs> well, it's all fascinating stuff, nonetheless. So how will this, this project weave materials, science and Matauranga Māori to, to paint a picture of Ponamu? Well, the carvers who work with it every day have incredible knowledge. They know about the strength and the grain and the internal stress and the quality in a way that I can never... Uh, I will never gain that knowledge. Um, but what we'd like to do is to tap into that and get them to help us select material and grade material so that then we can really analyse from a scientific perspective what those properties are that they're feeling and seeing and doing. Sure. And then we want to feed that information back to them so that they can sort of start to understand the science behind it and what that might mean for how they re um, reassess the rock essentially. Right. Sure. Can you talk to us through the scientific testing and, and the processes that you'll use to shine a light on this tonga? Yeah, so Panamu has many unique properties. Everyone knows its beautiful colours, its polish, and the way that we can do it. But there are lots of other things. For example, I mean, a lot of people would know that um, you can shine a light through it. And I, I, I've got one here where I can, I can shine a light through it. Other properties, for example, here is a beautiful gong that's been made. Now, there's not many rocks that can do that. Um, so we're interested in doing three kind of key things, is, is look at the physical strength using the, the micro-mechanical testing of how, how hard is it and how resistant it is it to breaking under machines. Also then the arrangement of minerals inside it using a scanning electron microscope to see how they're all aligned and, and how much they're twisted or, or mm. straight, and what size they are. And then we've got a very clever technique which we can do in, in Taiwan, which is to use a, a, a machine called a synchrotron X-ray, which tells us about that internal stress and how many tiny little holes are inside the, the Ponamu. So mm. three kind of main areas that we will get some new data. Can't buy. What opportunities does the research project provide for Ngaitahu descendants? Well, I'd like to think that the carvers who are involved will learn a new language. Just as I learn from te reo and, I can, and it helps me appreciate and understand the culture, 
in this reciprocal way, we can teach a different sort of language to the carvers in terms of the strength properties and things. And I think that will eventually lead to better selection and cutting of material and less wastage. And uh, it may well lead to uh, fewer oopsie moments with pieces that break um, sure. and, and perhaps uh, come to new value for the, the physical qualities. So mm. you might actually value better ponamu uh, in a different way. And I also think that it, in a in, in much more general way, it'll provide a much better understanding of the Atena Tonga. Absolutely. The project has already been built on nearly two decades of Ponamu research together with Ngai Tahi. What has come from that research and, and what are your long-term aspirations? I've been very privileged to be uh, working with the Papatipi Runanga um, and the Kaitiaki of Ponamu for a number of years now. And the key areas we've worked in are around the sort of provenance and the protection of Ponamu, mm. being able to tell where stuff's come from and things and, and using that to try and understand the archaeology. Also the resource assessment and knowing how much is there, where is it, where can you find it and 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 how um, sustainable it might be in different places. But now what we want to do is to learn from the Ponamu itself. So we want to learn about the past in terms of investigating archaeological things. We want to learn about the present, which is how the carvers can improve the way that they're doing things. And in the future, we'd like to see some super tough sort of synthetic materials, perhaps made out of plastic or something, that uses the, the same textures and things that Ponamu have to produce something that, that we've never seen before. Wow. So I don't know if that could happen, but can you imagine a plastic car that uses technology from Ponamu to have lightweight material that's driven uh, an electric car, for example, a really lightweight car. Wow, know, that all, that's just an, a, that all, an idea. But. It, it sounds amazing. It sounds awesome. Well, look, mm. all the very best with that research, Dr. Simon Cox from GNS Science. We have to leave it there, but thank you very much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. Okay.